Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. I've always been your host, Lawrence Seiler. Arlene is not here today. Unfortunately, um, my wife is in the hospital due to a uh, diabetic amputation. And that is what today's show is all about. So we wish her, us at Abled and On Air and Orca Media wish her well for a speedy recovery. Uh, we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health and other uh, supporters and partners, including the Muslim Media Corporation, as well as uh, partners with um, WayToMyHeart.org. That's www.WayToMyHeart.org, which is a, an amputee organization that advocates for limb loss, as well as other services. And they will be on next week. Uh, but on this show, we will, today we will focus on um, the definitions of what is an amputation, uh, the types of amputation, and the, the services that you can get due to uh, diabetic amputations. So um, the website that I would like to uh, talk about today is comes from the Cleveland Clinic. So that is www.clevelandclinic.org forward slash health treatment. So what is a diabetic amputation? An amputation is surgery to remove all or part of a limb or extremity and outer limbs. Common types of amputations involve above the knee amputations, removing part of, which means removing part of the thigh, shin, foot, and toes. Below foot amputation is removing the lower leg, foot, and toes, arm amputation, hand amputation, finger amputation, foot amputation, which is removing part of the foot, and toe amputation. Why amputations are done? Amputations are necessary to keep an infection from spreading throughout your limbs and to manage pain. The most common reason for an amputation is the wound that does not heal. Often this is not from having enough blood flow to the limb. After a severe <coughs> injury, such as cr a crushing injury, amputation may be necessary um, to, so the surgeon can uh, uh, 
uh, the surgeon cannot repair the limb. You may also need amputations if you have the following. Can cankerous tuners in the limb, frostbite, gangrene, which is tissue death, neuroma, peripheral artery disease, pad, or blockage of the arteries, severe injury as from a car accident, diabetes, which leads to non-healing or infected wounds or tissue death. How does peripheral arterial disease, PAD, lead to the need of amputation? PAD causes damage to the arteries, blood vessels, and carries blood from your heart to your limbs. This damage can, be, can lead to poor circulation or poor blood flow. Without enough blood flow, your cells may not get the oxygen or other nutrients they, they may need to survive a heal, uh, heal or wound. As a result of your tissue, it can die. Dying tissues is more prone to infection. Without treatment, the infections can lead to sepsis. So let's go um, to this word here on the website. Uh, sepsis, it can occur when your immune system has a dangerous reaction to an infection. It causes extensive inflammation through your body that can lead to tissue damage, organ failure, or even death. Many different kinds of infections can trigger um, sepsis, which is a medical emergency. The quicker you receive treatment, the better the outcome can be. So, overview of what sepsis is. Sepsis is a life threatening medical emergency that causes um, your body's overwhelming response to the infection. Without urgent treatment, it can lead to tissue damage, organ failure, or even death within 72 hours. Sepsis is your body's extreme reaction to an infection. If you have an infection, your immune system w works to try to fight it. But sometimes your immune system stops fighting the infection and starts damaging your normal tissues and organs, leading to widespread inflammation throughout your body. <clears throat> At the same time, your abnormal chain reaction in your clotting system can cause blood clots form in, that form in your blood vessels. This, re this reduces blood flow to the different organs in your body that can cause significant damage or even failure. The three stages of sepsis in terms of amputation are healthcare providers use, to use, use this to organize sepsis in three stages, um, sepsis severe, sepsis, and septic shock. Now they identify the condition <coughs> On more fluid on a more fluid scale, this scale ranges from infection to bacteria, bacteriomia, or bacteria in your bloodstream, to sepsis and septic shock, which can lead to dysfunction or multiple organs or even death. Sepsis can affect anyone, but people. With this kind of infection, except uh, especially bacteriomia, is a particularly high risk. People who are at risk include people older than 65 years old, newborns and infants, and pregnant people. People in the medical in medical conditions such as diabetes, obesity, cancer, and kidney disease people with weakened immune systems, people in the hospital or, uh, or who are in the hospital for other medical reasons, people with serious injuries such as large burns or wounds, people with catheter, uh, catheters, which is a, a catheter is a bag 
uh, for those that need to use the bathroom and they use the bag instead of the bathroom if they can't go. Um, IVs or breathing tubes. How sepsis is how common is sepsis? More than 1.7 million people. I'm gonna repeat repeat that number. More than 1.7 million people in the United States receive a diagnosis of sepsis each year, which can cause amputations. These are differences in sepsis rates among different demographic groups. Sepsis is more common among older adults with incidence increasing with each year about 65 years old. So the the symptoms of sepsis, it can affect many different areas of your body. There are many possible symptoms. If an infection such as blood poisoning, blood poisoning triggers your um, condition, you may develop a rash on your skin. The rash on your skin will appear red and discolored. You may see small dark red spots on your skin. Other common sepsis symptoms include um, uh, symptoms include the urge to urinate, um, low energy, weakness, fast heart rate, low blood pressure, hypothermia or very low temperature, chills, warm or clammy, sweaty skin, uh, confusion, agitation, hyperventilation, rapid breathing, shortness of breath, extreme pain or discomfort. Um, And one last thing on sepsis here, bacterial infections are the most common causes of sepsis. Fungal, parasitic, and viral infections are potential causes <clears throat> potential causes of sepsis you may get sepsis if an infection triggers a chain reaction through your body causing organ dysfunction the infection leading to sepsis can start in many parts of the body include um, uh, common sites of Infections can lead to sepsis include respiratory system, urinary tract system, gastrointestinal system, gallbladder, uh, infection, infection in your abdominal ca- uh, cavity, <clears throat> bowel problems, and appendicitis. Uh, it can affect your central nervous system, your spinal cord, your skin, and um, Sepsis is not contagious. You can't spread it to other people, but you can spread infections that can cause uh, sepsis. It is very important um, to prevent amputations quickly and quickly identify people with infections that may go to develop sepsis. There is no strict um, criteria to diagnose sepsis. This is why... Providers use a combination of findings from a physical exam, lab tests, x-rays, and other tests to identify the infection, uh, blood cultures, and diagnose sepsis. Providers may sometimes subject sepsis at bedside using a set of sepsis criteria. This is called quick, uh, quick substantial organ failure assessment. Q-S-O-F-A. If you have sepsis, you may be uh, confirmed or probable infection for at least two of the following criteria. Low blood, bl- low blood sugar, high respiratory rate, um, blood tests, urine tests, imaging tests, or CT scans. Okay, now getting back to... Um, amputations hold on okay so according to the website again www.clevelandclinic.org um 
So, um, getting back to uh, this. Uh, so what happens before an amputation? Your surgeon will provide specific instructions on how to prepare for amputation surgery. Most likely, you will be um, need to fast for at least six hours before the operation. Your surgeon may prescribe medications to take the morning of the surgery. Before the operation, you will receive anesthesia, um, medication that you won't feel pain. Most often, healthcare providers use general spine, spinal anesthesia. Um, general anesthesia makes you remain asleep during surgery. Spinal anesthesia numbs you from the waist down, uh, from the waist or limb down. An amputation is surgery, your surgeon removes all disease tissue. Your team will keep you, your team will keep as much healthy tissue intact as possible. Your providers will plan a surgery that sets you up for the best function after you recover. They include plans for a prosthetic artificial replacement limb, if you, if you will have one. Um, during the procedure, your surgeon will remove damaged tissue or, and crushed bone. They will smooth an uneven bone. They will seal the blood vessels to prevent bleeding. Um, the, they will shape the muscles so the stump uh, end of limb can be fitted with the prosthetic if desired. They will place a sterile bandage over the wound. And just know during amputation, you will have, uh, people will have wound care. Your surgeon may use stitches or staples to sew the stump closed immediately, or the surgeon may wait a, a couple of days to, uh, to allow your wound to drain. Um, after an amputation, you will need to stay in the hospital for a few days or longer. Uh, people stay as long as a week or two or longer. Um, by the way, according to websites, uh, whatever your doctor says, abide by because the information always changes. Um, your surgical team will track your healing and progress. You may take pain medications to relieve discomfort or antibiotics to prevent uh, infection. You will start working with a physical therapist within a few days or a week after surgery. Many patients will go to a rehab facility for a little while after the amputation. This is so that they can learn to do things as much independent as possible. Uh, will I need an artificial arm or leg? After, arm or, after your arm or leg is amputated, you may be a candidate for a prosthetic limb. Um, prosthetic limbs mimic the movements of natural limbs, but may feel awkward to use at first. A physical therapist and occupational therapist teaches you how to, how to use the artificial limb. Um, typical fitting for a prosthetic occurs about six weeks after surgery. And when the incision is completed and healed, you will receive a prosthesis. You will learn the basis of using it according how to put a prosthetic on, take a prosthetic off, uh, walk, <clears throat> walk and move with the prosthetic limb, care for prosthetic uh, and the skin of a uh, stump. And it says here, according to the website, if you don't want or can't get a prosthetic, depending on the type of amputation, your overall health and preferences, uh, you may not want to get a prosthetic. Your health care team will provide you education about how to move and function without your natural limb. You may use a walking aid such as cane, walker, or crutches. You may also work with a physical therapist or occupational therapist to learn how to engage in everyday activities after your amputation. 
the, benef- the advantages of an amputation. Amputation surgery stops the infection from progressing to other parts of your limb or body and saves your life. It can also help to manage pain uh, if there are no other options. Many people who have a prosthetic limb or surgery. Today, prosthetics are lightweight and highly functional. With them, you can still live an active lifestyle after limb, after limb loss. The complications of amputation include bleeding, swelling, or edema, swelling or edema, infection, wound, in, infection wounds, muscle weakness, pain. Uh, now, there's something here that I'm going to tell people, and we have uh, about uh, 15 minutes left in the show. Um, what is phantom leg pain, phantom limb syndrome? Phantom, spelled P-H-A-N-T. T-O-M, phantom limb pain. The most common complication of amputation surgery is phantom limb pain. Phantom limb pain occurs when the nerves in your stump send pain signals to the brain, even though the limb is no longer there. Phantom limb pain usually goes away over time. Physical therapy and therapy can help reduce the discomfort. Phantom limb pain is as follows. If you've had amputation or limb loss, you may develop phantom limb pain. The pain is real. It feels like it's happening with your missing body part. The condition may gradually go away, but some people who have residual limb pain in the remaining part of their limb um, can suffer from this. Pain relievers and a treatment called mirror therapy can easily help with um, phantom limb pain. Um, after an amp- okay, so after an amputation, phantom limb pain, people can uh, experience a part of their body that is no longer there. The sensation is phantom limb pain. The pain is real, and and phantom part refers to the location of the pain. The missing limb or part of the limb, such as fingers and toes. Um, Phantom limb pain ranges from, from mild to severe, and it can last for seconds, hours, days, or even longer. Um, it can occur after the medical amputation or removing part of a limb with surgery. It can also happen after accidental a- amputation. When you lose a finger, toe, or other body part, phantom limb pain can be managed. Um, an estimated 8 of ten out of 10 people who lose a limb experience some degree of phantom pain. Uh, now, getting to this, many factors may tra- may trigger phantom limb pain. Angina, which is chest pain or low oxygen to the heart, changes in temperature or barometric pressure, constipation, um, shingles, which is a derivative of uh, chicken pox or uh, physical uh, sex or physical touch uh, is the problem with phantom limb pain. Smoking and stress. Um, phantom limb pain may feel like burning or aching, uh, clamping, pinching, or vice like, itching or tingling, shooting or stabbing, throbbing or twisting. Uh, Okay, now, um, according to this, you should call the doctor if you experience phantom limb pain, severe pain that interferes with sleep or daily activities, signs of infection such as fever, redness, or residual limb situations. Um, uh, 
a note about this website. Phantom limb pain is a common occurrence after amputation or extreme extremity loss. You should not you should not fe feel embarrassed or seek help or or ex embarrassed to seek help. These feelings of pain are real. It's also possible uh, to have an infection or other problem in the remaining part of the limb or stump um, that can cause pain. Your healthcare provider can determine the cause of pain and uh, provide treatment. Um, phantom limb pain also, also Im improves over time. Um, also, uh, in terms of amputations, um, let's, so the several types of uh, amputations are um, Um, throughout your recovery of amputations, you may you may need to reach out to different members of your healthcare team. Uh, you should call your surgeon if you notice new so signs of infection, such as sores, wounds, or um, that are on your stump. You should call your physical therapist if you experience stiffness or challenges with movement. You should call your um, prosthetic uh, limb specialist if your uh, if your artificial limb rubs pinches or doesn't fit correctly and you should also call your um, mental health professional if changes in your body result in issues like anxiety or depression now if you're suffering uh, if you are dealing with your amputation, um, and it becomes a problem, please consult your doctor. Um, again, here at Abled and On Air, we are not uh, doctors. We are not professionals in the field of amputation. We only give journalists uh, journalistic information that, uh, and provide information to people with disabilities and their families. If you should have a problem uh, dealing with amputation, uh, especially on today's show, the following website, which I have dictated, um, you, uh, you can contact the following website, which is www.clevelandclinic.org. That is C-L-E-V-E-L-A-N-D clinic.org forward slash health treatments. Again, www.clevelandclinic.org forward slash health treatments. We would like to uh, thank the following uh, partner in, in these next couple of shows and also going long term with Abled and On Air. Uh, we would like to thank the following uh, partner uh, from the website, www.waytomyheart.org. Uh, so, uh, so, so, Way to My Heart, and they're going to be on in the next week or so. Uh, Weight to My Heart is an organization that deals with peripheral arterial disease, or PAD. Uh, for more information on their website, you can go to our partners page, www.thewaytomyheart.org. That's www.thewaytomyheart.org. Um, if you want to find out more about peripheral arterial disease, uh, on their on their website, um, they're here. The website is there to uh, make you more informed on decisions on peripheral audio care and explore ways to manage your disease that can help you live a better quality of life. Um, you can also call if you have um, if you have problems. Uh, there is a um, Support hotline 
you can get support by uh, on the lake on on the lake Sabres hotline or amputee um, Sabres hotline. Uh, Pad is the narrowing of artery, arteries <clears throat> that occurs in the peripherals, main, uh, mainly on the legs, that causes plaque buildup. The symptoms of Pad include leg pain, leg cramps, tingling, neuro, uh, neuropathy, skin di discoloration. Uh, non-healing foot sores, uh, and uh, the other risk factors include heredity, uh, diabetes, obesity, smoking, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and many other symptoms. The diagnosis. Some physicians may misdiagnose the symptoms of aging, uh, including PAD. Uh, you can ask your surgeon to help test you for this um, and there are pad specialists uh, the prognosis caught uh, caught early um, peripheral audio disease is treatable to slow the progression of the disease left untreated it can lead to heart attack stroke and and even amputation the key to understanding your risk factors uh, can deal with early diagnosis and treatment. Um, so, if, if you also want to um, go to the website to uh, waytomyheart.org, you can also click, uh, they have a video library if you're dealing with uh, peripheral audio disease or anything with amputation, you can click on it to see videos. Um, and if you need a doctor, you, you can click a link to find a doctor in your area that specializes in this. Uh, for more information on PAD uh, or anything that you've seen today, um, on today's program, you can go to www.thewaytomyheart.org. That is www.waytomyheart.org, and also the website www.clevelandclinic.org. That is clevelandclinic.org. Um, we would like to uh, specifically thank our partner in today's program. Uh, the way to my heart dot org, which is a um, organization dealing with peripheral audio, um, artery disease and amputation saving. Um, they have advocates uh, waiting to hear from you if you are dealing with this. And they also have a wonderful support group headed by uh, Kim McNichols, which is uh, she's also a person from California who uh, who runs this organization and is co-founder of this organization that helps people with peripheral artery disease and amputations. Uh, we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health and WayToMyHeart.org for any partnerships of Able Then On Air. This puts an end to this edition of Able Then On Air. Uh, again, my wife uh, sends her heartfelt uh, fact that she's not here for today's show, and we wish her a speedy recovery. I am Lauren Seiler. See you next time on the next edition of Able and On Air. See you next time. Major sponsors for Able and On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able and On Air include Park Chester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Able to Run Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, 
Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Denonair has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Abel Denonair is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.